Halloween is not just a time of year where we eat a bunch of excess candy and gain a bunch of weight, nor is it about trick-or-treating or dressing up as spooky characters or our favorite characters as we go out and have parties and all that stuff either. And it is most definitely not about pumpkin spice products. Halloween is also about all things scary and things that go bump in the night. It is about, it is about being scared shitless by things like zombies and werewolves and vampires and all those other creepy crawly type things that scare us. Anything you can dream up that becomes your nightmare is what I think Halloween is about the most. Halloween for me is about all of these things, and if you are like me, you love video games as well. There are hundreds of horror games that you can find all across the many generations of PlayStation, and since the PS2 era, there have been a lack of horror games across the generations, and it just hasn't felt the same, but man, looking at the PlayStation 5 catalog of horror games, and the list of the future horror games that will be coming on the way, the next few years of horror games looks promising. For those looking to play some horror games on the PlayStation 5 during Halloween, I've got you covered. I have a perfect guide of 25 horror games that you can play right now to scare yourself silly for the rest of the year. As a fan of horror games, you may have found yourself playing a Resident Evil or a Silent Hill game in the last few years. Both series are famous survival horror games that make their start on the early PlayStation years and have evolved over time. If you are a fan of these original Resident Evil and Silent Hill games and are looking for a game that has that old tank control style puzzle solving horror game experience that you're looking for, then I have a perfect game for you. Recently I discovered Tormented Souls, which is just what I described, a classic survival horror game that plays homage to old school Resident Evil and Silent Hill style games. As Caroline Walker, you will explore the dangerous abandoned mansion looking for two missing twin girls. Along the way, you will encounter dangerous enemies that are terrifying to look at, and you will have to be smart about using your weapons to survive. Ammo is scarce, and saving is not readily available without records or it's on hand to record on and save. This game is at its core a puzzle game with many scary moments. Tormented Souls is the classic survival horror game that you all probably have not seen in a long time, unless you played Last Generation's Daymare 1998. Probably one of the best psychological horror games currently on the PlayStation 5 is Madison, which sends you to a dark place where your family is murdered and you wake up covered in blood with a possessed instant camera. The camera is connected to the human world and the beyond, and with it and many other things, you will have to use your wits to solve puzzles, explore your surroundings, and survive if you can. Madison may be the name of the game, but it is also the name of the woman who murdered many people and is now a horrifying ghost who continues to force people to go through her gory ritual. Madison tries to force you into continuing her work and have you finish her ceremony. Madison is also not the only enemy you will face because there are many other evil entities that you will face face along your way, and you will have to use your instant camera to survive. The game features changing puzzles, random activated events, and allows for high replayability. Madison is one of the most unique PlayStation 5 modern horror games, and is out right now on PlayStation 5. Back for Blood is the long-awaited sequel to Left 4 Dead that we never got technically. Back for Blood has you playing alone or with friends as you try to go from level to level surviving hordes of zombies and specialty zombies. Back for Blood features many unique levels and characters that have different abilities that can be useful in surviving the game. Each playthrough is different and not predictable. You will have to work as a team to survive the hordes and accomplish tasks along the way. The game also features a card system that will help you along the way by giving you boosts to your ammo, damage, health, etc. But there are also cards that can make your enemies even stronger and more deadly. Back for Blood is not a horror game that is meant to scare you, but it features zombies and survival. There is a sort of rush that comes with trying to survive and stay alive when you're dealing with hordes of endless zombies. Left 4 Dead was one of my favorite games, and with there not being a true sequel to the series, Back for Blood is the next best thing and has so much replayability along with new DLC on the way. Since we're already talking about horror multiplayer games, we cannot go without talking about Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight is a one versus four multiplayer game where you are either the killer or one of the four survivors trying to escape. As the killer, you, your goal is to capture the survivors and sacrifice to an ominous and malicious dark force known as the Entity. 
As a survivor, your objective is to escape through exit gates once you have fixed the five generators. There are many different playable survivors and killers. The killers have ranged from unique, scary entities that were created specifically for Dead by Daylight, and then the other killers are inspired and designed by our favorite horror killers like Freddy Krueger, Ghostface, Michael Myers, Pyramid Head, and many more. Each killer has their own unique abilities and can be leveled up to become even more vicious throughout the game. The game has some strategy in it as well as you can set up traps for the killer, and Dead by Daylight is constantly getting updates. It is the perfect horror game to play with your friends this holiday season. Though many of you all are going to not like this game being on this list because of the price point and it not really needing a remake at this point, but The Last of Us Part 1 is one of the best games on PlayStation 5 and it technically is a horror game. The Last of Us Part 1 is one of the best survival horror games that you can play on PS5 right now. The Last of Us Part 1 is a faithful remake of the original game released in 2013. In this remake, we get updated graphics and gameplay that makes this game look and feel better than ever. The visuals are stunning and the atmosphere has never looked better. The Last of Us Part 1 has a unique survival horror atmosphere and gameplay. Clickers are scary, not only to encounter, but here, the second you hear them making their noises, you instantly feel uneasy and unsafe. I love exploring the world created by Naughty Dog and the story is one of the best ever. If you've never played it, then you really need this game, but for those just wanting to re-experience the game on PS5, maybe hold off on that price because $70 is a lot for a remake. In Sound Mind is a psychological horror game that puts you in the first person perspective of psychologist Damon Wales, who wakes up in an apartment building and has to navigate his way through creepy locations while dealing with the fears and psyches of his patients. And Sound Mind has you solving puzzles and encountering enemies while trying to discover why you and your patients are connected. And Sound Mind makes you feel like something is just outside of your view, watching you as you deal with what feels like hallucinations and give you the feeling that nothing is right. And Sound Mind is tense and is one of the most psychologically horrifying games available on the PlayStation. 5 and is worth experiencing the different haunting areas, puzzles, and the unique enemies you will face in the game and it's worth every minute. Fatal Frame is a series that has been missed dearly since the PlayStation 2 because very little of the Fatal Frame games have made it to the West because of its lack of popularity here. Many Fatal Frame games do not live up to the expectations of the original games though, but Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater is considered to be the worst game in the series by many, but for the most part the game is still the closest we will get to the series until the new Fatal Frame game releases next year. Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater features the classic photo taking mechanic to defeat ghosts and ghouls. The haunting atmosphere and creepy cutscenes live up to the series standard. This game demonstrates the unique side of Japanese lore and horror, and it is the, even though it has some clunky controls at times and can be very frustrating, it still feels good to play this game's series again, and next year you'll have another game in the series on the way to play as well. Martha is Dead is a horror game set in the 1940s that follows Guella, who is on a mission to learn how her twin sister Martha ended up dying. Guella on her quest will take on the identify on the identity of Martha to discover what led to her death. Martha is Dead is one of the best narratives that will have you glued to the screen from the start of the game. Martha is Dead has some very disturbing scenes and the game at times can be visually stunning. Martha is Dead has quick time events and adds pressure to choosing the right path or yourself or Martha may not survive. The game may not be perfect gameplay wise but the narrative and story is what will keep you having a great time. The atmosphere is great, it has an amazing shock value, and I am very glad that this game exists and you should give this game a chance as soon as possible. Alan Wake was one of my favorite games on the Xbox 360 and I'm so glad that we got a remaster just this year. Alan Wake got a remaster on the PlayStation 5 and man if it did not deliver in every way possible. Alan Wake places you in the middle of a small mysterious town called Bright Falls where you and your wife are staying to try and help you write your next novel. Alan Wake though soon will be stuck in a nightmare where his wife is missing and he wakes up with days missing out of his life. What is even more terrifying is that he is finding pages of his novel that he wrote of everything that is happening to him in real time. Alan will face various psychos who are out to kill him along with a dark presence that seems to be possessing the townspeople. The only way to defeat them is to use flashlights and fire to weaken the enemies as you can sh so you can shoot them. Inanimate objects can also be possessed and be thrown at you as well. You will have use you have to use the light to defeat the dark while trying to discover the mystery of what happened to you and your wife. 
Alan Wake has a great narrative as told through Alan Wake's writing, and the PlayStation 5 version of this horror remaster is perfect and will be the best experience. If you're interested in playing Alan Wake 2, then you've got to play this game as soon as possible because that sequel is coming out next year. Like many other psychological horror games, Visage is a slow-paced, atmospheric horror experience that combines discomfort and horrifying realistic environments to mess with you as you play. Visage takes place in a huge house that can easily get you lost, like an endless maze. Visage messes with your head by filling you with memories of the dead, families that once lived in that house, the story in the house to help scare you and keep you uneasy as you play. In Visage, the house you are exploring has a terrible past and many families have been murdered there. People have also committed suicide and much more have happened in that house to make it a pretty fucked up place. You will not only see the gruesome events, you will at times relive them as you are left feeling restless and terrified. There is no combat in this game, so you are left with nothing to protect yourself, and you will have to use the environment and key items to help survive this nightmare. Now, I've already talked about Metal Hellsinger in a previous video, but I did want to talk about it here as well. Metal Hellsinger is not necessarily a horror game, but it has a lot of grotesque demons that you will face, and some of the environments and imagery used in the game are pretty terrifying and disgusting. Metal Hellsinger is a rhythm first-person shooter which requires you to shoot to the beat of the music. The more you're in sync with the rhythm, the more intense the music becomes and the more damage you'll deal. The game is decently short, but it is a lot of fun. The game is not scary, but if you are looking to hunt demons this Halloween, by all means, you might as well rock out to some awesome metal while you're doing it. There is seriously no shortage of horror games based in Japan, but one of the most interesting of them all is a game called Yuani. Yuani is a first person horror action game where you are taken back to the year 1990 in Japan as a school teacher named Ai. Ai is closed off to the world and you are forced to play children's games. Ai will have to deal with the day after day of monstrous shadowy entities and eyeball monsters among many other scary things. Yuani turns children's games that are meant to be innocent and fun and turn them into a living nightmare. You will play hide and seek, tag, and many more as you will have to use items to get you gather to survive as well as remember what paths you've taken because you will be putting yourself at risk to be trapped forever. Ai has no weapons to defend herself and you will have to learn and discover the weaknesses of the spirits you face to beat them. The game has multiple playthrough endings and is one of the most unique horror games on the PS5 in my honest opinion. If you've been under a rock your entire life you may have never heard of Chernobyl which is a place in the Ukraine country that has become a complete radioactive wasteland due to the nuclear power plant disaster. In Chernobylites, you will be playing as Igor, a former Chernobyl nuclear power plant physicist who is exploring the Chernobyl exclusion zone, which is an area that has been marked unlivable due to radioactivity. Igor is in search of his wife, but along the way you'll encounter stalkers and hostile military personnel who are out to kill you. Chernobylites is a survival game which requires you to gather supplies and craft equipment and weapons to continue to survive the game. Chernobylite is a single player experience that has a linear and non-linear elements to the game and the game takes place in an open world. The game also features different endings based on your choices, and Chernobylite is an interesting take on the disaster that took place in Chernobyl, and for those who love games like Fallout should find some enjoyment in this game, and this game graphic-wise looks fantastic. When it comes to our next game, Ghostwire Tokyo, many of you will probably not think that this game fits in the horror genre, but it's heavily inspired by Japanese ghosts called Yokai. Ghostwire Tokyo is a first-person shooter that adds magical powers to your arsenal to deal with these supernatural entities called Yokai that have taken over the world. You are one of the last remaining individuals alive and will have to fight off these spirits to survive. Ghostwire Tokyo has fun gameplay and its story is overall great. I love Japanese folklore and the setting in this game is gorgeous. Anytime I can play a game set in Tokyo and enjoy a horror game based on Japanese folklore, you have me hooked and ready to play for hours. It may not be the best horror game, but if you are into Japanese lore, ghosts, and first person shooters, then you will find something about this game you'll enjoy. Supermassive Games has given us so many horror games over the last few years that we've enjoyed, like the Dark Pictures Anthology games like Man of Medan, Little Hope, and they gave us the Until Dawn games. On the PlayStation 5, we did get the third game in the series, House of Ashes, 
And House of Ashes takes place during the 2003 Iraqi invasion and focuses on individuals who are stuck in an ancient Akkadian temple during the end of a war, and they must survive the awakened evil or die. You are not only stuck in the middle of a war, but an enemy is hiding amongst them who cares not which side they are on. Just like all the other games made by Supermassive Games, there is choices that have, will lead to all characters surviving or dying. Each choice can have consequences. House of Ashes improves on the experience of the Dark Pictures Anthology series and showcases just how good this series can be. The creatures hunting you in this game are evil and terrifying, and I love this game more than any of the other Dark Pictures games. There are jump scares, gory deaths, and more than, than that that awaits you as you play. House of Ashes is a story-driven experience that can be played alone or with friends, but either way, you're going to have a good time. Slasher films are some of my favorite movies, like Scream, Chucky, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, you name it, I love slasher films. Teen slashers would be perfect for a video game series, and this year we got a fantastic game just like that called The Quarry. The Quarry is yet another game made by Supermassive Games that takes players' choices and multiple characters to tell a horrifying story. Supermassive Games is mostly known for Until Dawn in the Dark Pictures Anthology, but they made The Quarry as their own standalone game that gives us this teen summer counselor slasher movie game. All of the playable characters are unique and have different personalities. The story takes place on the last day of camp as the counselors are celebrating. As soon as night comes, things begin to get worse as something deep in the dark is out to kill the cast of characters that you have access to play as. Just like the other games made by Supermassive, all the characters can die and your goal is to keep everyone alive by the end of the game. There are frightening moments in the game and you will have to survive the things hiding in the dark. The Quarry is like an interactive movie with a great storyline and is fun to play alone and with friends. Supermassive Games has solidified themselves as a company dedicated to making movie-like horror game experiences, and I am here for every one of them. One of my all-time favorite games that is considered horror is on the PlayStation 5, and that is What Remains of Edith Finch. What Remains of Edith Finch is a collection of strange tales about a family that grew up in Washington State. As Edith, you will explore the Finch family, searching for stories about her family's history as you try to figure out why she is the last one in her family alive. Each story follows the life of a family member on the last day of their lives, and some are in the distant past while some are more recent stories. All family members' stories are played in first person, and each story ends with the death of a family member. The game is not one of your typical horror games, but man, if it is a game that does not make you feel so uneasy and feel downright disturbed by the deaths of all your family members. War Remains of Edith Finch at times is a peaceful game that can be relaxing to play, even though the horror is there. This is a must play for any fan of video games, even if horror is not your thing. This next game we're gonna talk about is a game I had never even heard of until I started compiling this list. But from everything I saw in this game, it looks so good. Dread Out 2 is a third person horror game that draws the inspiration from Indonesian folklore and urban legends. We've gotten plenty of Japanese lore games in the horror genre of video games, but it is rare to get a game based on Indonesian folklore. In Dread Out 2, you will play as Linda, who is a high school student with the ability to sense and see ghosts. With her smartphone, she will hunt down nightmare spirits and dark forces that threaten her and the other people in her hometown. Though I have never played this game, it seems that you can play the game without having to have played any other games in this series. Dread Out 2 apparently has a upgraded melee combat system and more emphasis on the exploration. What is unique about Dread Out 2 is that the game features somewhat of an open world that allows you to explore Linda's hometown using her smartphone camera to defeat enemies, but that is not all. You can take, you can talk to the residents of the uh, village, whether they're alive or dead, and you can complete side quests and collect local myths to complete the Ghostpedia app on Linda's phone. Dread Out 2 looks really good based on what I've read, and I plan to play this game as soon as I possibly can. We have yet another game in the horror video game genre about a journalist who decides to go do some dumb shit and almost die. In Phobia St. Denfina Hotel, we have a journalist named Roberto Leet Lopes who have traveled to the Santa Cantarina in hopes of breaking the story about the mysterious disappearances and paranormal activity that is occurring at the St. Denfina Hotel. You are tasked with using your investigative skills to uncover the truth behind the hotel and you will use your camera that reveals different timelines to help you solve puzzles and scavenge for supplies. Surviving requires you to run, hide, and fight the monsters stalking you. 
Bobia's use of timelines and cameras is an awesome take on this genre and gives for a unique experience that is terrifying and gorgeous at the same time. What makes The Sinking City unique and sets its part of the horror games is that it's an adventure game as well as an investigation game that is set in a world inspired by H.P. Lovecraft and his horror tales. The game has you dealing with supernatural forces and as a private investigator you will have to uncover the truth behind what has possessed the city. In The Seeking City, you will feel like you are dropped straight into the world of a H.P. Lovecraft novel with a vast open world to explore. The Seeking City has multiple cases to investigate with different ways to solve the mystery with different endings. The game also features the use of weapons to defeat nightmarish creatures and a feature which you have to manage your mental health. Seeking City's atmosphere is gorgeous and the gameplay looks fun and looks easy to pick up as well. If you want a mystery game and elements of horror to it, then this game is probably a better choice for you than some of the other ones. As I stated before, there are plenty of games to, that have been made in the horror genre for video games that's inspired by Japanese folklore. And IKEA is no different. IK is a first-person psychological horror game where you are left to survive at the hands of yokai who wants you dead. IK is a classical psychological horror game that features a defenseless main character who cannot protect themselves against evil creatures. IK takes place at a feudal Shinto shrine and you will have to make your way around dodging the evil spirits, running for your life, hiding or drawing protective seals to help keep yourself alive from strange events that are occurring. IKEA also has you solving puzzles to make your way through the story, and there are many games that feature this same premise, but if you are a horror fan, you cannot go wrong with this title. It has many of the tropes that other games we've talked about today have, but if it's not broken, do not fix it. In Darker Skies, the world has ended due to a war, and Jack, one of the last survivors of the war, is trying to rebuild a working heat ray to get himself to freedom and try to help rebuild civilization. After the war, it left the world with psychotic enemies that are suffering from an infection called Redwood. As Jack, you will, wrap, you will gather parts to rebuild the heat ray, and along the way, you will encounter other survivors. In Darker Skies, you can craft weapons and items to take out creatures you face. You can sneak if you want to, or you can shoot your way through. This game lets you choose, and that's something I like about it. Darker Skies looks interesting and is one of the only games we've talked about today that is set in space. Oxide Room 104 is probably one of the most unique games on the list today because it mixes roguelike elements with survival horror and decision-making gameplay. In Oxide Room 104, you wake up in a bathtub of a motel room naked, wounded, and not sure where you are. Everything you do from this point on will lead to one of the many endings of the game, but there's only one good way out. Each situation has many ways to solve them, as well as different paths. Everything is virtually interactive, and you will need to search for resources, maps, clues, or something to defend yourself to survive. What makes this game like a roguelike game is that every time you die, you wake up in the bathtub in room 104, but each time coming back to life has a price. The game features great replayability and is one of my favorites on this list. When it comes to survival horror games, you could choose any of the games out of the Resident Evil series and you would not be doing yourself anything wrong. Resident Evil 2 Remake, Resident Evil 3 Remake, Resident Evil 7, and Resident Evil Village are all fantastic games that are available on PlayStation 5 in some form or capacity. Though Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 3 Remake and 7 have upgraded for the PS5, I really do want to focus more on Resident Evil Village, which was a new game on the PlayStation 5 last year. Resident Evil Village was one of my favorite games ever made and is worth playing right now. First off, Resident Evil Village is a sequel to Resident Evil 7, and though Village is less terrifying, it has one of the best atmospheres to explore, and the enemies are so cool. You play as Ethan once more, and in this game, you are out to find who has taken your daughter. Along the way, you will face werewolves, creepy ceramic dolls, and some of the best boss fights in any Resident Evil game are featured in Resident Evil Village. The game takes place across many different houses, wine cellars, basements, and more. You will be chased, attacked, and followed by many enemies along your way. And Resident Evil Village is just such a fantastic game that has DLC coming out very soon on the 28th. Though we know most of you are probably going to play this game because you're hoping that Lady Dimitrescu will step on you, but you will discover more than just that along your journey on Resident Evil Village. Sadly, we have not had a Silent Hill game in many years, but we've gotten pretty close recently on the PlayStation 5 with a game called The Medium. The Medium, though, is more than just an inspired Silent Hill game. The Bluebird team has made some fantastic horror games in the last few years, but The Medium is probably the most unique one that they have made. 
which features a split world. In the medium, you play as Mariana, a medium who can communicate with the dead and can navigate both the real world and spirit world simultaneously. During certain parts of the game, you will enter the spirit world, but you will be present in the real world at the same time. You will have to navigate both worlds, which can serve as a cool way to interact with the environment as well as solve puzzles. The medium does not give you many ways to defend yourself, and you will have to make your way across the spirit and real world as you deal with creepy environments and enemies. The medium's graphics are fantastic, and personally, it is one of my favorite horror games on the PlayStation 5, and just continues to make me want a Silent Hill game again so badly. But the medium is one of the most unique games, and is a, has the spirit of Silent Hill flowing all through it. That was 25 PlayStation 5 games that are horror games in some way of capacity. You, know, you get it. Some of them were exactly horror games. Each game has its own unique qualities and stories that are worth exploring. Though October is almost over, there is no rule that says you cannot play horror games outside of October. If you found a game here you love and are interested in playing, comment below what game you are most excited about playing amongst the ones I talked about. Thank you all for watching this video. I really appreciate all of you all who come to this channel. If you like this video, please like the video, comment below, subscribe all those fun things because I make PlayStation content all of the time but I'm gonna get back to playing some more horror games I'm gonna go play me some more tormented souls because very very soon we're getting Gotham Knights and my whole life will be consumed by that game very soon thank you guys for watching I'll see you guys next time